have Deputy Charlie McConnellogue to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Marine the need to amend proposals for the new GLAS scheme. Deputy, you have four minutes. Um, are you expecting, Minister, are you expecting to take this issue? Minister Hayes. That's yes, okay. Yeah, thank you, Chairman, and thank you to Minister Hayes for coming into the, the Dáil this afternoon as well to take this question. As you know, Minister Hayes, there was a protest outside your department this morning um, by farmers from many counties across the country, particularly along the west coast and uh, southern west uh, southwest counties on the issue of the glass scheme and in particular minister the restrictions which you and minister coveney are placing in that scheme by requiring a minimum of 50% of all of all farmers involved in the commonage to actually participate in the scheme in order for any one to actually any one farmer to participate in that scheme that minister i know in response to a parliamentary question i put down has been reduced from a previous uh, threshold of 80% of all farmers participating, which, um, which you have uh, which you've actually reduced now to 50%. However, I'd like to point out some very uh, pertinent figures to you in relation to the nonsen nonsense of the department and yourselves trying to put in this uh, threshold and the impact that's going to have, meaning that the vast majority of farmers, farmers with commonage will be excluded from actually participating in the glass scheme. Nationally, Minister Hayes, there's 14,929 farms with commonage. That's just about 11% about of all farms. Now, under the REP scheme, out of that 14,929, there was 3,500 farmers participated in the REP scheme. That was a 24% take-up of the REP scheme by farmer, farmers that had commonage. And I might point out to you, Minister Hayes, that the REP scheme could be joined individually by farmers. It wasn't dependent on other farmers actually joining as well. And it also had a maximum payment rate of €12,000. This new glass scheme, which is being introduced now, has a maximum payment rate of €5,000. And unlike the previous schemes, you can't join it on your own. You are saying you can only join it if 50% of all other farmers who have use of a commonage also join it. And the experience having been only 24% availed of previous schemes in the past. That will tell anyone, Minister, that the story is you are blocking out farms and farmers that have commonage from participating in the glass scheme unless you reverse your approach to that. And many of these farms are, far, are households uh, which have lower incomes when we look at uh, average incomes across the, the state. For example, the average beef farm income last year, Minister, was €15,000. The average sheep farm income was €11,000. And that was significantly down in before. And this new glass scheme, Although it's, 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 it's a lower income uh, a threshold at €5,000 than was required or needed, it would represent a big uh, income and a big proportion of income for, for your average beef or your average uh, sheep farmer. Yet you are now, through the proposals you are introducing, excluding many of the most vulnerable family farms uh, from actually participating in this scheme. So I would like you, Minister, to address those points in your reply. And the other thing I would ask you to give clarification on is when will farmers be able to get their first payment under the glass scheme? Is it correct that it won't be until the end of the first year? In which case, that farmers will not be able to actually get a payment under the glass scheme until 2016 at the earliest. That's unacceptable, Minister particularly for, poor, for, for low income uh, family farms to be blocked out from a very essential payment and part of their income for such a large period of time. Thank, thank you, you Deputy McConnell. Minister, you have four minutes to reply. Right, first of all, can I de uh, thank Deputy uh, Charlie McConnell for, for raising this uh, very important issue to many farmers. And it, I suppose it gives me the opportunity to just to clarify uh, many of the issues out there about, about the, the new GLAS scheme. It's GLAS is designed around core requirements which all applicants must satisfy. And they are, number one, an approved agricultural planner must prepare the GLAS application. Number two, a nutrient management plan for whole, whole farm must be in place before payment is issued. Number three, the applicant must participate in training courses, specific actions, and number four, proper record keeping would be essential. All very basic and essential uh, items. 
A tiered approach is being applied, applied to entry into the scheme, and these tiers are based on a consideration of priority environmental assets and actions. The tiered approach will give priority access to farmers with important environmental assets such as nutrient uh, sites, farmland habitats, high status water areas, or common edge land. The tiers will operate as follows, and I think this is very important uh, for me to outline these. Farms with a priority environmental asset, such as important habitats, uh, they are privately owned nature areas, SP SPAs and SACs, important bird species, high, high status water courses, common edge land or rare breeds, or a whole farm stocking rate exceeding 140 kilos organic manure protector, which has to be produced on the holding, provided they agree to certain related mandatory actions, or more than 30 hectares of arable crop, again provided they agree to certain uh, related mandatory actions, or indeed, and which you would, I suppose and presume that everybody welcomes, registered organic farm status. In the case of commonage owners, priority access under Tier 1 is guaranteed if they can achieve 80% participation level in a collective. Under Tier 2, farms with other key environmental assets are indeed commonage owners who secure a minimum 50% collective participation. A whole farm stocking uh, rate of less than 150 kg livestock manure per hectare, or less than 30 hectares of arable crops undertaking key environmental actions. And then, under Tier 3, farms who do not qualify any of the criteria of Tier 1 or 2, but who commit themselves to a series of general environmental actions, will qualify as 25 to 30,000 fa 30, farmers are being accommodated under the scheme, it is all likelihood the vast majority of Tier 1 and 2 applicants will qualify, and that's very, very important. The proposed payment is 5,000 per annum, with the scheme building up to the inclusion of more than 50,000 farms, with a total envisaged expenditure of 1,450 million over the programme period. It is proposed that within budget limits, GLAS, GLAS Plus payments will be put in place for a limited number of farmers who take on a particularly challenging action, which delivers an exceptional level of environment benefits. It is proposed that this uh, payment will be up to 2,000 per annum in addition to the 5,000 already paid under GLAS. I would now like to set out some of the background to our proposals on commonage, uh, which Deputy McConnell uh, uh, Could we uh, put, put out the, 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 the rest of the, the speech for the last two minutes, if that's okay? Well, we're, we're, the we're, rest of it is to deal with the commonage, which the question is about. We're four minutes in. in the, uh, Sorry? That we're four minutes into the speech. So the if, if you, I let the Deputy talk for two minutes, and then you can respond in two, in two minutes you've left. Okay, but I think it's important for the... I, so I, I have to, to I have to set out the rules here, Minister. It's up to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's unfortunate because we haven't, the Minister hasn't really got to dealing with the uh, particular questions which, okay. which I've asked. Can we, can we, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you for that because it's important too. Um, I would like to set out some of the background to our proposals in common. The proposed last scheme must respect the provisions set out in Council Regulation 1305 of 2013 and address key priorities identified at European Union level. Payment under the scheme can only be made in respect of actions going beyond the baseline under the basic payment scheme under Pillar 1 of CAP, which are in simple terms. This means that a farmer cannot be paid for twice for the same commit, uh, commitments under both schemes, and I think that's only quite fair. Since the introduction of the Agri-Environment Scheme in 1990s, the Pillar 1 baseline has been progressively raised for each programming period, and this challenges us all in putting together schemes 
that will gain approval at European level. Farmers are required under the basic payment schemes to maintain land in good agricultural and environmental condition, and common land is no exception to this requirement. We must all remember that the European uh, Commission contributed significantly to the GLAS scheme. A key element of the new strategy for managing the commonage under GLAS is the development of a collective approach, where the majority of shareholders come together to manage the land in the best interest of the broader environment. GLAS is an environmental scheme, and all measures proposed under the scheme must make a clear contribution towards better environmental management of agricultural land. As I already explained, a two-tier system is being put in place to guarantee commonage owners prioritised access to glass. Top priority will be given to those who can achieve 80% or more participation in a collective, but if a minimum of just 50% can be secured, that will guarantee second-tier access to the scheme, and I hope that clarifies uh, for, for you. I believe this con uh, concession, which was introduced last month, will significantly ease the burden of securing agreement, while at the same time providing a critical mass for management of the commonage, which can be expanded upon uh, in, future, in future years. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Deputy McConnell. Yeah, thank you, Minister. I think, unfortunately, the reply doesn't address a couple of the key concerns which I'm putting to you, Minister, and a key concerns which farmers were putting this morning as well when they actually felt they had to come to Dublin and protest. I outlined earlier how your average beef farm income is €15,000, how your average sheep farm income is €11,000. These are households and farming families which have small incomes by and large, and that's the type of farms which generally uh, have commonage attached to them as well. Um, this, and the, the key point I made to you, Minister, is that under the REP scheme and previous schemes, which were much more financially viable for these farms, only 24% of farms with commonage actually signed up to them. 24%. Now, what you are requiring for any of these farms that have commonage attached to them, uh, you are requiring them to now also have at least half of the other farmers that use that commonage sign up to glass at the same time in order for them to be able to participate. Looking at the history of such schemes, that is simply not going to be possible, Minister. And what you're doing is you're, you are blocking what is one-tenth of farms across the country, and particularly farms in counties such as Donegal, Mayo, Galway, Connemara, Kerry, much higher proportions there. You're blocking them from a very, very valuable scheme. And unless you actually, you and Minister Coveney, change your approach to this, you are defeating the whole purpose behind this type of scheme. Under previous environmental schemes, an individual farmer could apply. They didn't need 50% of farmers using commonage land to apply at the same time alongside them. And by that one farmer applying, they were uh, introducing measures which were environmentally friendly in their farm and also in commonage. What you are going to achieve is blocking any farm with commonage attached to it, any, any farmer with that has a farm with commonage attached to it from participating at all, even those that farms that don't use the commonage anymore, will not be able to apply Thank you, because Miller. they can't meet the terms of the scheme. You need to go back and rethink this. You need to listen to what the farmers who, who came down to make their views heard and to try and get the attention of yourself, Minister Colby, in this. You need Thank to you, listen Miller. to what they were saying. And unless you go back and completely change your approach to this, you are going to cut one-tenth of the lowest income farm families in the country out of a very important scheme, and a scheme that is very important for them to be able to continue in farming. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Look. Can I, I need to, you know, to, to you know, be helpful in relation to this. I want to assure you that we are open at any time. Last evening at 8 o'clock, we met the farmers that were protesting here on, on Wednesday. We're open, in the next two weeks, uh, we're meeting the IFA in relation to them. We've agreed a course of action. The programme is not gone to Brussels, but we have to, when, we, when it's gone to Brussels, we have to have something that is acceptable, that they are willing to uh, grant aid, because most of the money for this is actually coming from Europe. And I think we shouldn't be sending out uh, the message that this is an income scheme. This is not an income scheme. 
This is an environmental scheme. It's for the environment, and it won't be accepted unless uh, we can prove that it is the, the measures that are in the scheme will help the environment. So that's the first point I, I, I think that it has got to be made. You can compare it with the old REP scheme. The old REP scheme was just sign, signed up and anyone could do it. Uh, it just wasn't as simple as, uh, as it was a lot more simplified. We're living in tighter economic times, so you have to justify uh, the money that you're spending. In relation to the 80% and the 50%, there are also the option, and you didn't mention it at all, and I think this needs to be got, the planner, uh, the paid planner, which everybody has to get, they can draw up the plan, and they can uh, bring the people uh, that own the commonage together. So there is a way uh, of, of, of around this from an environmental point of view. So I would say to you finally that we are open for consultation, we will meet the IFA, I welcome the people that come here and talk, uh, talk about this, but there is one thing to remember. The bottom line here is it is a, an environmental scheme and I will, it's wrong to send out the message that it's an income related scheme. It's, it may be treated as that by some people when they lobby and that's fair, fair play, but the reality is when this plan goes to Brussels, it has to stand up from, a, from an environmental issue and the measures Thank within it have to stand up uh, for it to be successful because we don't know if they reject it. it, it, it Thank it you, Minister. Sanction. There will be no money left for so I hope that clarifies the best I can, but we are open to talk to the people and talk to the family. Thank you, Minister. Uh,